Братья и сестры, поздравляю вас с праздником жатвы. В этой проповеди я, бы, я хочу рассказать о важности и благодарности. Давайте вспомним, как щедр наш Бог и как мы должны выражать Ему свою благодарность. Blessed be the Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates fruit from the vine. Good morning, dear church. It is another beautiful Sunday, but as you can see, it's a very special Sunday. It is the festival of harvest, Harvest Sunday. And um, this festival can bring a lot of different topics that maybe could be spoken from this pulpit. But through this sermon, my goal is to remind us to pray with the attitude that harvest reminds us of. And in this sermon, I would like to address three questions. First question is, what attitude does harvest bring? Second is, why is this attitude essential to the life of believer? And lastly, how can this attitude be present in your life? Before we discuss this attitude, I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Psalm 118. We will read the first four verses and the last two verses of, the, of this Psalm. Psalm 118, verses one through four. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. Verses 28 through 29. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever, amen. This psalm, maybe it does not re reference directly to harvest, but it brings up a crucial attitude that can be reminded through this festival of harvest. There are a lot of symbolic meanings behind this festival, and the two that I'd like to focus on is that harvest symbolizes God's provision in our lives, and not only provision for our, our lives, and the second is that it's a blessing unto others. From these experiences, from these symbols, we experience the attitude of gratitude. Psalm 118 is known to be the chapter that is in the center of the Bible. Maybe depending on English to Russian translation, it's a little bit different by one chapter, but 118 is known to be the center chapter of the Bible. And it's very interesting how it's surrounded by the shortest psalm and the longest psalm. Psalm 118 first starts off with giving thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. And not only that, it begins with it, but it also ends with the same exact words, giving thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. As much as we may not think about it, we experience harvest every single day. We don't have a harvest service every single Sunday or Wednesday, but we experience harvest every single day. Every time you go to work, you work your labor, you get a paycheck. That's harvest. You've harvested that paycheck. Every time we have fellowship and get love from family or friends, we harvest that love. Every time we experience God's love and fellowship with him, we experience spiritual blessing of harvest. Every time we get filled, we experience harvest. But this harvest does not belong to us. Matthew chapter nine, verses 37 through 38, says, Jesus says these words. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. God is Lord of the harvest. The harvest does not belong to us, it belongs to God. When we put God in his rightful place, we recognize him as the Lord of our harvest. We realize that he is the one who gives us the hands to work, that he is the one who supplies our needs and provision in our lives for our families, and our family is his family. It rightfully belongs to him. Finally, when we recognize that the Lord of the harvest, for who he is in our lives, we also embrace the fact that 
and while in part our harvest is something that is given to meet our needs, it also can bless those who are around you. It's used to bless others around you. This is why the attitude of gratitude is essential in the life of a believer. When we realize that what we have is not ours and that it belongs to God, we realize how good and a generous God He is. He provides for every single need we have in our lives. Our work is not our own, it's God's. That's why the scripture says, everything that we do and everything must do it as unto the Lord, not as unto man. Because when we realize that this harvest is not ours, we see that it's only by the grace of God we have what we do. And when we acknowledge that, God extends his grace. When we do not acknowledge God as the Lord of the harvest that he provides for our needs, then we may, we may grow hard-hearted and proud. It may show that deep inside we may think, this harvest is mine. This was done by my power. This was done by my work. I went and labored for years to get to this position that I'm in. No. It's by the grace of God you and I have what we have. He is the Lord of the harvest. Our harvest belongs to him. The Lord gives you love. Bless others with love. Sharing the blessing that, Lord, that the Lord gives you if he gives more than enough provision for your family. The Lord calls us to have this attitude not just on this special day of harvest, we remember the harvest. This is an attitude that he calls us to have every single day of our lives. It's not only for ourselves, but we should share with others. If someone is struggling to see what God has blessed them with, encourage and lift them up instead of discouraging them and pray that God will open their eyes to see the blessings that they have. So what can we be grateful for, church? How many of you entered the house of the Lord of this morning, this morning, with an empty stomach, not by choice? How many of you came here thirsty with no water to drink? How many of you have no access to the word of God? That is a blessing that the Lord of the harvest gives. Our God is the one true, generous, and loving God, and his love endures forever. We may look to examples from the Bible to see how generous God is. We can also look at examples in the Bible to see where true gratitude, what genuine gratitude looks like. And the one example that I wanna bring up is from the life of Jesus. Well, it's actually a few examples. Matthew chapter 11, Jesus thanked the Father that he had hidden the truth from the world but revealed it to those who sought the truth. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus gives thanks for the few loaves of bread and few fish that he miraculously fed the multitude of people. In John chapter 11, Jesus thanks the Father for hearing him when he raised Lazarus from death. In Matthew chapter 26, Jesus gives thanks and breaks bread. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God doesn't say give this attitude of gratitude when you feel like it, when you feel good. Give thanks in all circumstances, no matter what your life may be going through. Jesus is the greatest example of showing gratitude. He gave thanks even when breaking bread and he knew that it symbolized his body being broken and the wine, his blood that would be shed for the sins of the world, for mine and your sin. He still gave thanks to the Father because he knew the cross was ahead of him. He still gave thanks to the Father. He deserves our gratitude and praise for that. Harvest brings forth the attitude of gratitude Gratitude is essential to the life of a believer because it shows that what we have is not ours, but it's God's. He is the Lord of the harvest. We briefly looked at the examples of Jesus' life, what attitude of gratitude is shown in his life and how we can take an example from that. To show our gratitude based on the examples of Jesus, we must remember him and serve others. 
The last point is that we show our gratitude through our prayers. Let us be thankful to the Lord of the harvest, for he is generous and good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Сейчас будет пение хора, а после братья, пресвитера выйдут и совершат благодарственную молитву.